Elsagate on YouTube has arguably been getting worse and worse throughout the years. Even with YouTube adjusting their guidelines to prevent this so-called family-friendly content from being posted, it's still present during these times. In today's video, we are going to be looking at the Elsagate iceberg and explore some of the well-known and unknown controversies surrounding Elsagate. Without wasting any more time, let's dive into layer 1. Before we discuss the current Elsagate controversy, we gotta take a look at the early days of Elsagate and kids content on YouTube in general. When looking at the first largest channels dedicated to children's content, they were already well known on TV and had made a respectable name for themselves. In this case, some examples would be Sesame Street, Spongebob, Peppa Pig, and so on. But as years went by, newer unestablished kids channels started to make content as a way to take advantage of YouTube's newest edition, YouTube Kids. Back in 2015, kid-friendly content was being heavily promoted, and so these channels were doing anything, literally anything to get their names out, so that they could receive the big YouTube paycheck. Now just to make things clear, there were definitely channels out there trying to make educational content and really didn't care about the profit, but as we go down this iceberg you're gonna notice that that's not really a common theme here. Eventually, these smaller channels had to adapt and receive more attention than the mainstream and larger channels that were garnering all the attention. So what did these accounts do? They started to use well-known and iconic cartoon characters in their videos. These characters were either live actors wearing their characters' costumes or were animated. In order to gain search results and attract audience from multiple users, the creators would put up the names of characters and include keywords such as education, learn colors, nursery rhymes, and so on in the title and description of their videos. Because of this, more and more people were being shown this content as it would be recommended to them. But as they continue to watch them, they would later learn that these videos weren't necessarily the greatest. What made the situation worse is that kids were watching these videos due to curiosity and were unaware what was being shown to them and how negative it was for them. Videos discussed topics such as injections, kidnapping, salt, and much more. Now that was just a brief overview of the history of Elsagate and that wraps it up for layer 1. Layer 1 was only one topic because I wanted to give a brief summary of Elsagate just because there might be people there who were unaware. But before we continue on, I would like to thank these fellow creators for the inspiration behind this video. So, Swanene, Knight, and Raimundo, if you guys are watching this, just know you're greatly appreciated. But with all of that out of the way, let's go to layer 2. The Finger Family video by creator Lee Ho Sok is the first known video on YouTube that showcases the Finger Family. If you don't know what that is, it's one of the more popular nursery rhymes that talks about a family of fingers. Each finger is assigned for every family member and everyone has their own figure to them. So from what I read, usually the middle finger is the dad followed by the mother being the ring finger, the youngest child being the pinky, and so on. The reason I bring this video up is because the finger family has been a popular trend regarding Elsagate videos, as some of these videos would use famous cartoon characters as the fingers, while other channels would use controversial figures and do undescribable things. But going back to the original Finger Family video, it was uploaded on May 25th, 2007. It has been speculated online that this specific video was the start of the Elsagate pipeline, and I'm gonna be honest, I don't think I agree with that. I don't see any ill intentions throughout the video, while it's simply just a nursery song being played in the background, while the Finger Family is being shown, and even looking at the channel itself, it just seems that a parent is recording their children and having a good time. Moist Critical even made a video about this topic back in 2016, and this statement alone by him basically summarizes my thoughts about the Finger Family trend. There's just something very wrong with these channels and these Finger Families, but I've seen so many of them now. I, I know my fingers better than pretty much anyone else on this, on this planet thanks to these videos. So. Now if you're wondering how I even figured out about the Finger Family video, there's actually an Elsagate timeline that's been posted on an online spreadsheet that has documented a majority of Elsagate history since 2007. And while we're talking about this, it's actually the next topic. The Elsagate timeline shows everything Elsagate related since May 2007 
with the majority of the events occurring from 2015 to 2017. Looking through the spreadsheet, it highlights all the channels that have been created and showcases important dates related to Elsagate, such as November 27, 2013, which was when the movie Frozen made its theatrical release. The main character in Frozen who's named Elsa is where the term Elsagate comes from and has been given a name due to being one of the most popular characters featured in these types of videos. The timeline also displays how many views the top channels were averaging during their peak and I always knew that some of them were earning a couple million views a day but after looking at the sheet, I was actually mind blown. Kids Roma Show, 18 million views in a day, Kids Diana Show, 27 million and then the next day after, both of these channels basically doubled those views. I'm not done by the way. On July 26, 2017, a channel named Kids Toy Media gained 311 million views in a single day. Eventually, major news outlets were informed about Elsagate and the videos being made was a channel titled Webs and Tiaras as they became one of the first to gain mainstream attention. One of the first articles published about Usagate was about a channel titled Webs and Tiaras. The Guardian would make an article talking about the channel and its odd climb to success, despite only being created a couple months back in March 2016. As described by the article, Webs and Tiaras featured characters such as Batman, the Joker, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Captain America. Their videos also had no dialogue and only contained background music which made it appealing to a global audience rather than just English speaking children. Regardless of how short the article was, this definitely reached an audience who may have never even heard of this channel. And keep in mind, the term Elsagate would only be created in the summer of 2017. So when these types of videos were discussed, they were only referred to by the channel names. But that ended off for layer 2 and layer 3 is when things take an unsettling turn. So for this layer, we are going to be looking at some of the channels and accounts that made Elsagate well known. There's also a couple investigations and they are a bit graphic heavy, but I'm going to try to keep it as light as I can, but this is just kind of a warning. The tabloid investigation on Toy Monster deals with an event that occurred in November 2017 when a French Canadian news outlet known as Tabloid released a now deleted video investigation about Toy Monster, which was a channel linked to webs and tiaras. Supposedly, the guy recording the video saw that those involved with the Toy Monster channel were actually filming their videos in Quebec, Canada. They were easily recognizable since they would show their faces on the YouTube channel and were actors for it. After a bit of research, he was able to track their exact location using Google Maps and it was determined that they were based out of the south shore of Quebec City. When a man approached them at their house, a young woman opened the door and the man would ask if they could all have an interview together. In a concerned manner, the woman responded by saying that she would have to ask her boss. Another man who wasn't the boss would talk a bit and explain that they wanted to stay low key and not become well known in the area. Eventually the boss, or a better name, the ringleader, they didn't like how he was being recorded and didn't want the interview to happen. After leaving them, the man running the investigation wanted to find even more actors who had been a part of other channels. And as expected, he would find two other individuals who admitted that they have been involved with various Elsagate channels, but that since they were under a contract, they couldn't talk about what's behind the scenes and the work that's involved in the video making process. With this information, it was then revealed that other identical content was being posted on numerous channels that were operated by those exact same people, and it was concluded that this was just a major money scheme. At the time, this was one of the more alarming discoveries, since the situation led to the true dark side of Elsagate. Because realistically, as stated before, all people could do is just make assumptions on why these videos were being created, but for the first time ever, evidence was documented. Fat channels refer to Elsagate channels that were short-lived or that used to post Elsagate related content but no longer do. An example of a channel that I found is The Big Fish Plays. Looking at their oldest videos, they posted gaming related videos, mainly Clash of Clans and a couple others. However, they have reposted videos from another Elsagate channel known as Educafun 2.0. 
but going back to the big fish plays. But I brought up the channel because, I mean, they posted gaming related videos and the post Elsagate related content was odd. Or so it seemed. <laughs> I briefly mentioned this earlier in the video when talking about how channels were simply uploading for money purposes, and this channel is a perfect example of that. Comparing the performance of these videos to their gaming videos, there's a dramatic difference in views. The channel is still up and running, as well with their latest video being from 2 months ago, but as of now they no longer re-upload Elsagate videos, which could mean that they were just doing it for quick money. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section. In November 2017, several published articles were written about a YouTube channel named Toy Freaks. The channel was created by Gregory Chisholm, a single father at the time, with two daughters named Victoria and Annabelle. If you've also been down the Elsagate rabbit hole, there's a good chance you may know about this man. And if you don't, you may have seen this image at least once. But if you're still unaware, I'm gonna tell you a story about a very strange man. Gregory Chisholm and his two younger daughters would make videos together on popular YouTube kids trends to try and capitalize on getting a larger audience. This heavily favored them as during November 2017, Toy Freaks had over 8.5 million subs, they were a top 100 channel in such a short amount of time, and had multiple videos over 100 million views. However, besides their typical trendy videos, Toy Freaks specialized in making very gruesome and disturbing videos. Also, it was argued that Gregory was letting his daughters up themselves on video. He has uploaded videos where both his daughters can be seen vomiting and showing signs of distress. On top of this, it was later determined that someone was re-uploading Toy Freak's videos on other local video platforms in China, where YouTube is already blocked in the mainland. The main platform that it was being uploaded on was known as Tencent. It was also during this time that Toy Freaks and other channels were receiving heavy backlash from news outlets, and more and more people were starting to become aware of how severe the situation was. YouTube finally responded later that year in August, as they announced their new guidelines surrounding content and monetization. In their official blog, it was stated that creators would no longer be able to monetize videos that made inappropriate use of family-friendly characters. Later that same year in November, they made another announcement in which they implemented a new policy that age restricts inappropriate content in a YouTube main app when flagged. With all these new rules and policies, Toy Freaks was eventually booted off the website since their videos essentially broke every rule, specifically the child endangerment policy. Also, remember how I mentioned that Greg's content was borderline abusive? Well, turns out he actually almost got charged for his actions. One week after his termination, Missouri and Illinois authorities announced an investigation into Greg Chisholm for child abuse. A ton of his videos were used against him, but the most prominent were the two that consisted of him getting both of his daughters to urinate on themselves and spitting baby food on one another. And somehow, after investigation, after all the content was exposed right in front of them, Greg wouldn't be tried for child It only got worse after this since Greg would be interviewed by a news outlet known as Variety, and when questioned about his actions on YouTube and his account being banned, he stated, While it is disturbing to me that anyone would find inappropriate pleasure in our video skits, I deeply appreciate YouTube's concern for my family, and I could not be happier was having this remarkable experience. Victoria, Annabelle, and I want to thank our supporters as my girls have had the opportunity to develop their creativity and self-confidence over the past few years. Their future is bright. Is it really though? They're definitely going to suffer trauma when they're older and just because their videos have been removed from the platform, it doesn't mean that their personal experience has been erased. As stated before however, Toy Freaks wasn't the only channel that got terminated, as YouTube started to do even more investigation, and all seemed to be going well for now. By the end of November 2017, YouTube released a statement that revealed that they have terminated more than 270 accounts, removed over 150,000 videos, disabled comments on more than 625,000 videos targeted by child predators, and even removed ads from nearly 2 million videos 
and over 50,000 channels that pretended to make family-friendly content. Other major companies such as Adidas paused advertisements on YouTube in response to the disturbing children's content. While this was a positive outcome and it seemed that everything was going downhill for all these guys, it wouldn't take that long for other channels to find a loophole around this and to continue making these types of videos. Even till this day, Elsagate content is still prevalent and we're gonna be discussing this in the next layer. At one point during its popularity, Elsagate related flash games were a thing and would often be promoted on YouTube as a side advertisement. The thumbnails for the promotion were all questionable as well and what I mean by this is that the creators or whoever created the ads didn't even attempt to make it look kid friendly. Just take a look at this image and even this one. When I was doing research for this video, I noticed a trend of imagery where cartoon characters or people were either pregnant or were suffering from injuries. At first I didn't understand it too much but there's a whole theory surrounding this topic, which I'll be talking about later on in this video. But going back to the games, there were all typically flash games with the gameplay either being a surgery procedure, pregnancy, and sometimes even torture and killing of animals. These were all directed to kids and links to these games were right in front of them. Now this topic somewhat goes with the one I just talked about. But instead of flash games being promoted through their terrible advertisements, we are going to be looking at games that are already well established. For every popular children's or realistically any new game that comes out, disturbing children related videos will be pumped out that use that game's main characters and mascots as their main attraction. For example, arguably one of the best games of all time, Minecraft, has content creators that make content using Minecraft Steve and others that are supposedly intended for kids. But as we all know, shouldn't be. Friday Night Funkin' is another one that's been popular lately. The original game is a simple musical rhythm game, but a couple of mods have been created, known as the Pregnant Mod. And of course, I can't forget about Poppy Playtime, which exploded in popularity when the game was first released. What's a bit different about this community is that people will dress up as mascots and do whatever this is. Oh my god, beautiful smell. Mm -hmm. mm, beautiful. So, is this a fetish just for shock value, or is there something going on behind the scenes? Let's see if we can get an answer after exploring the not safe for work Poppy Playtime pipeline. Whatever's happening, there can't be a good reason, especially since this is being marketed towards children. Before we go any further, I have to give a huge thanks to fellow creator Swanene for investigating this pipeline. He made a video talking about the subject and introduced others and myself about a topic that wasn't well known before. So if you wish to show support to him, I'll leave a video and channel link in the description. This pipeline is based on the game Poppy Playtime and mainly features Huggy Wuggy and Kissy Missy as the standout characters. Many creators have made videos showcasing their Poppy Playtime walkthrough. However, we are going to be focusing on channels that have uploaded these questionable videos. The first creator goes by the name Gopi. Quickly scrolling through their channel, nothing seems out of the ordinary until you realize that a ton of older videos are not safe for work Puppy Playtime content. Looking at the thumbnails alone, you can already tell what the content is based on. Now, this isn't the only channel that features this type of content as others discovered by Swanene, do the exact same thing if you type in Huggy Wuggy and Kissy Missy into the search bar. But in particular, there's a certain channel that takes it a step further. Instead of your basic animations, Kissy Show has two people, presumably adults, who dress up as the mascots and make the most sexual references in their videos. Now of course, young children who don't know any better are going to click on the videos just because they see their favorite characters on the thumbnail. But let's be honest, they're not mentally prepared for what they're about to witness. The two creators even add trendy and goofy sound effects to appeal to a younger audience on all their videos. Here are just a couple of their videos. No, Chowder. No. Please, 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 please. No, 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 no. Now, as a way to defend themselves, 
Their about section states that the Kissy Show and all of its videos are not directed to children and are created with PG-13 plus elements. But as we just witnessed, this might not be the case as they're clearly catering towards a young audience. Also, a lot of Elsagate related channels do this as a way to like prevent themselves from being caught and to be like, oh, you know what guys, what we're doing is fine. You don't have to worry about it, but there's clearly a problem going on. <laughs> but that ends it off for layer four. Let's move on to the last and final layer. The full episode's play this controversy occurred when someone created a post on the r slash elsagate subreddit discussing their horrifying discovery. In the post they stated, search hey arnold full episodes into youtube and filter the results to playlist, or don't because it's vile. With them stating that they can't post an image or link since it leads to- Instead a description for one of the playlists is shown, and as you can see, this is awful since they are using keywords that will cater towards kids who are looking for Hey Arnold episodes, but instead, they will be shown a video. After this discovery, it was tested out for other shows, and as expected, the same thing would occur. However, this is when it took a weird turn. It was tested out by a fellow creator, Raymondo, that if you type in Poppy Playtime full episodes, the same results would show up and would show the playlist Naked Attraction despite Poppy Playtime not even being a TV show. For a while, this was a concerning problem since no one knew why this was happening and why YouTube wasn't doing anything about it. But thankfully, after Raimondo made his original video on this topic and having to deal with it getting age restricted, his video got appealed and now if you search this up, they have wiped out all of their terms and are showing their appropriate playlist. Which meant that a YouTube higher up actually listened to what Raimondo was saying and got rid of the playlist. And once again, I know I've done this so many times this video, but I gotta give credit to Raimondo. He did a great act. Moving along, it was then proven that some creators were using these playlists as a way to get views and money. They would strategically put their videos in these not safe for work playlists, so when the videos autoplay, they would get views based on it appearing next. This is just a scummy way to get views, but I guess people are desperate. With everything that has been presented to you surrounding Elsagate, you still may question why it exists. And I have pointed out a couple points throughout the videos, but there seems to be two logical reasons on why these videos are being created. One of the more popular series is that those who are behind this all are predators and wish to exploit the most vulnerable. Think about it, essentially all the content being posted desires from violence, odd fetishes, and much more. Kids are easily influenced and people are aware that parents aren't going to be able to monitor their kids 24-7. So while children are playing, watching, or texting online, this would be the easiest way to get into contact with them, to which they can then negatively influence them to believe what they're viewing is normal. The second theory is that the people posting these videos aren't doing it only for money, but to affect the behavioral issues of children. With the new policies and guidelines surrounding kids content on YouTube, Elsagate related videos are usually demonetized, and the people making these videos are aware of this, so instead, they're going to release the content on certain themes and expose them to children. Then predators online can use this as a controlling method when engaging with them. So what does this mean for the future of Elsagate? If we're going to be honest, Elsagate may just get worse. Every year, more and more children are actively online, and with the powerful use of trends, Elsagate related videos are just going to pop up more often. Since video games and cartoons will also always exist, there's always going to be an opportunity for those characters to be the new mascots for unsettling children's content. Just wait until the next children related game comes out. I can promise you that the characters will be used for sexual content. And that ends it off for the video. If you made it to the end, I appreciate you for watching. So I haven't made an iceberg in a while. I believe it's been almost a year, but uh, I honestly want to make more of these. Even though I do talk about disturbing content, doing a deep dive on something I'm interested in and hopefully you guys are interested in is a win-win. So let me know in the comments if you want more iceberg videos or just deep dives in general. Also, if you haven't noticed, my last video and this video are over 20 plus minutes. 
this is a big deal because I do see the comments where you guys are saying, Gubby, we need longer videos. And trust me, even if I don't heart or reply to the comment, I do see them and I will make longer videos for you guys. But anyways, that's enough for that. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and as always, have a great one.